Wow, subhanAllah. So you have this, what is historically documented, you have Heracles, you have him like you are bringing to our attention that the he put all the Christians together. They got to hear some of the Quran. They're crying, weeping. Uh, they recognize this as the truth, but they didn't accept because of that power. Like now, what are you going to do? You're going to just live for prestige power. You're going to live for just the things of this world. Or are you going to accept the truth? But with the truth, there come sometimes consequences, right? People rebelling like they were going to do against him. Uh, but then you have other examples, you know, uh, you gave this example, the Persian, but then there was also others, Christians, who also accepted like the Christian king of Abyssinia. So this is another example of a Christian. Can you talk about who now he also was someone who was just, who was fair, someone who later, did he accept Islam? Well, this was way, way back in the beginning, in the early times of Islam. The letters to the Najat to the uh, um, uh, to uh, the Persian emperor to the emperor of Bahrain, which is in the eastern part of of uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, the emperor of um, the Byzantines, the king of Coptics of Egypt, and to the Abyssinian ruler, these were on the ninth year of Hijra, which is. Uh, 22 years after the revelation started. That was about two years before the death of the Prophet, if I'm not mistaken. So it's almost an Am al wufud when people came to accept Islam, etc. This is when it was sent. And it might have been, uh, let me recollect. No, 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 I was wrong. I was wrong. Sorry, I apologize. Um, you don't have to edit this, but this is just to show how poor I am and how mistakes I made. This was way back because when it came to the uh, Abyssinian emperor, Abu Sufyan ibn Harb was at the time of the truce between the Muslims and the, this, the Mushrikeen. And this was before the conquest of Mecca. So this was before between year six and year eight of Hijra. This is when it, it took place. Now the Abyssinian king you're talking about his name was an najashi He was Christian. And at the time, he was Christian. But this incident took place 12, 13 years ago. Meaning that when the Muslims were prosecuted in Mecca, before they migrated to Medina, they were so finding it difficult to live to the extent that the Prophet sons told them, listen, Allah has made way out for you you may migrate to Abyssinia, which means that you have to get on boats, cross the Red Sea, go to a foreign land with a different language. And nowadays, if you're a uh, frequently flyer and you have uh, um, access to different airlines and hotels, no problem. You can just come send me an invitation to Kuala Lumpur and I'll come within eight to 10 hours. That time, it was like the difference between life and death for, for Bedouins to go on ships and cross the sea, not knowing how to swim to a foreign land. Whoa. So they went there. Now, the thing is that the Prophet told them, Ali Sassam, go there because there is a king. People will not be oppressed under his reign. And that is one mind-blowing fact because for a, a a man who was illiterate who did not read and they didn't have any fox news or cnn at the time yet he knew who the rulers of countries around him and how they dealt with their people this shows you that the amount of knowledge the prophet had about what was going on so he said to them go to him so they went and they asked permission to live in his country. And the, the Najashi, the Abyssinian king, allowed them to. After some time, the idol worshippers of Quraysh, of the Mushrikeen, the enemies of Islam, did not like this. So they sent two men to try to persuade the king to send them back. These men, one of them was Amr ibn al-As, may Allah be pleased with him, who was a kafir at the time. They went with lots of gifts. So they gave all the close ones to the king, particular gifts, watches, jewelries, 
golden pens, money. So they bought the court of the king. And then they went to the king and said to him, we have a problem with our, our locals who came to you, they're renegades, and they um, say bad things about our gods and idols. So we would like you to send them back with us. We will deal with them. All those around the king said, yeah, 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 they know their people. Send them back with them. We don't need strangers. And definitely we're not going to build a wall like Trump's wall. So send them back. So he said, no, they came and chose my hospitality and country. How can I return them back? I would not do this. So the following day, went to the king and said, ask them what they say about Jesus, because they say something that is extremely wild and inappropriate. Being a Christian, he said, okay, I have to hear what he, 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 they say about him. So he gathered them. Their spokesman was Jafar ibn Abi Talib, the cousin of the Prophet. Of course, the brother of Ali. So he was the spokesman who came in and gave his speech. And he said, I will read you verses from Al Quran. And he read the verses from the Quran portraying the miraculous birth of Jesus Christ and what had happened with his mother. By the time he ended reciting the Quran, tears was filling up the face of a Najashi and even his monks and priests. And he said to them, Wallahi, Isa is nothing more than what they have recited. Jesus. This is when, yeah, uh, uh, Jesus Christ. This is when the monks and priests started to yeah, become angry. Because it says that Jesus had no father and there was no male intervention. Rather, it was the Archangel Jibril who planted his soul in the womb of Mother Mary. They did not like this. And the Abyssinian king was unlike the uh, uh, Hercules. He ordered them to shut up and said that this is the truth and nothing else is the truth. They conceded. And he told them, do whatever you want. You are free to worship Allah Azza wa Jal in my land.